do this. What if you launch it from 20, at 20 meters per second up at an angle of, let's say, 30 degrees? And I ask you, what's the range of that projectile? In other words, what horizontal distance does that thing travel? Yes. The first thing we're going to do is, what does this mean? It means it's going, it's doing two things at once. It's going sideways and up at the same time. And those two components are vectors. Yes, they're vectors, and those perpendicular vectors are independent of each other. So I'm going to treat them independently. So the very first step when I have a non-horizontal launch, right, when I'm launching at an angle, is I'm going to draw again. But part of drawing in this case is also solving the triangle. In other words, breaking down that vector into its components. Which means for vertical, we'll call this the vertical Y. Actually, no, better yet, I'm going to call it V sub Y, right? It's the vertical velocity. What trick function am I going to use to solve that? Okay, good. Sine of 30 degrees equals what? Vy over, over 20. Good. Vy over 20. Therefore, V in the y direction is 20 times sine of 30 degrees, which is just 10, right? So this side is 10 meters per second. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the horizontal. I say the horizontal component of the velocity, <coughs> I can use one trick function, cosine. Cosine 30. Um, yes, I could use special right triangles. Uh, it's 306090 is coming over. Um, I can use the 306090 right triangle rules, or I can use PFAC. The reason I'm going ahead and showing you the trick function both ways is because we don't have the rounding issue that we do with p time. And also, um, this practice of breaking a vector down into its components happens so much that I'd rather you use trick functions when you can. Okay, good question. Um, was that, is that Vx? Yes, V sub x. Okay. Over 20. Therefore, V sub x equals 20 times cosine of 30, which is about 17. So when I say it's going 20 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees, what I really mean is it's going to the right 17 meters per second and up 10 meters per second at the same time. Okay? Now, I want you to get in the habit of doing this. Every time you work a non-horizontal launch problem like this, as soon as you find the two vectors, or the two components, the horizontal and vertical components, cross the total vector out, the resultant vector, because we're done with it. And the most common mistake when working these problems students make is they come back and they substitute in that 20 when they have no business doing so. And you'll see that in just a second. So get in the habit of once you've broken it down into these components, cross it out. We're done. Alright? What was step two? Find time. Good. Find the time. From what? Y. From Y. From the vertical. So, I'm going to work with the 
vertical for a second. Delta y equals initial vertical velocity times time plus one half vertical acceleration times time squared. Ooh, is this now, when it hits the ground over here, how much will its Zero. position will it change? Zero. So, zero equals, what was the initial vertical velocity? 10 meters per second. Plus one half. What's the vertical acceleration? Excellent. Negative 10. Because we just assumed, and we need to show that, that up is being determined as being positive. Because which direction is the acceleration? Gravity. Yeah. Gravity is the only force acting, so the net force is in the down direction, so the acceleration is down. And I know that, right? Because as it goes up, its up velocity gets smaller. And an up velocity getting smaller is what kind of change? Negative, right? A down change. So you used to like 10t equals negative on the down side? Right, negative 10t equals 1 half t squared. Right, this is negative 5t squared, right? So I can move that to the other side. 5t squared equals 10t. So, what do I do now? Right. Yeah, divide by 1t. I get 5t equals 10, therefore t equals 2 seconds. Uh, when I move the 5t to the left side of the equation, oh, I got two seconds. Okay, what did you divide by? <coughs> 2. I mean 5. No, I read it by t. I read by t the first time, and then I read it by 5. So you divide by 5 times 2. Sure. Yeah, because you just... Uh, you can divide by 5 times 2. Okay, I'm sorry. How did you get the 0 for the delta? Because oh, right here? Delta 1. Okay, good. The ball starts here at some vertical position on the ground. It goes up in this parabolic path, and when it finishes here, what vertical height is it at? The same. So how much did the vertical position change? It did. Which, by the way, that's not always going to be the case. So you the right? Right? Your time in the air is two seconds. Yes, so the time in the air is two seconds. Now, a little bit of a parenthetical for a second. Was there any other equation we could have used besides delta y? No. Yes. Delta x. Yes. No. Not no. to the time, so time we can only get from vertical. No. no. Can you do no. acceleration y? Acceleration y. Uh, also time. Uh, acceleration is delta v over time, right? Therefore, time is delta v over acceleration. Do I know how much the velocity is going to change as it leaves this point and comes back to this point uh, vertically? Negative 20. Because when it hits the ground here, what's its vertical velocity going to be? Negative 10. Because if I toss the ball up, When it comes back down to the same height, it's going the same speed in the opposite direction that it was when it left my hand. Because it's experiencing the same acceleration for the same amount of time. See the symmetry? Up and down. It goes the same distance up as it does down. It experiences the same time up as it does down. It's experiencing the same acceleration up and down because the force is the same. Therefore, the change of velocity up is going to equal the change of velocity down. So when it gets to the top, what's its velocity? Zero. Zero. So how much does it change on the way up? Ten. Ten in the negative direction. And then how much does it change on the way down? The same, negative ten. So when it hits the ground, the final velocity is negative ten minus the initial velocity was positive 10, 
divided by the acceleration, which is negative 10. What's negative 10 minus 10? Negative 20. Divided by negative 10 is 2. Now, just a word of caution. This equation works only when? When it's going to, when it starts at one point and ends at the same point. Exactly. When it's going to end at the same point it started. Vertically. Vertically, yes. So like not off the cliff. All right. Not off the cliff or up onto a building. Okay? So that's why I showed you this way first. This way right here always works. This one's a little faster, if you understand it, but it only works when we return to the same vertical position we started. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. What's step three? Yeah, find delta x, or whatever else was given. From that, we're going to go to horizontal, and we say delta x equals what? Horizontal velocity times time plus one half the horizontal acceleration times time squared. And the horizontal acceleration is zero. So it's just the horizontal velocity times the time. Which what was the horizontal velocity? Seventeen. Yes. Times two seconds. So how far did it go? 34, 35 meters, depending on where you're going. Okay. Now, do you see why I had to cross up this 20? Because the most common mistake is students get to right here and they say, oh, it's the initial velocity times time. So they run over here and they say, oh, the initial velocity was 20, and they plug it in. No. Because that's mixed fading, right? That's taking a velocity that wasn't just horizontal to find a horizontal distance. So we're finding a horizontal distance, we can only use the horizontal velocity. Question. And you just added them? No, I multiplied. Wait, added what? To get the 17. Uh, remember the oh, because that's in the horizontal. 